so welcome all and thank you so much for coming along to our first talk of Black History Month. Um, my name is Mary, for those of you who, don't, who I don't know. Um, I'm the Global Vice Chair of the Black ERG Group. And as you have seen from loads of comms over the past days and weeks, we have a lot planned to celebrate Black culture over the next few weeks, and we hope that you'll be able to join us in some of those celebrations. But today, I have the great pleasure of introducing Dr. Martin Glynn, a criminologist, a wonderful writer, and an experienced lecturer who will be talking us through how we can all become more culturally inclusive and responsive. When Black History Month comes around, it tends to focus a lot on the African-American situation, a lot on the Caribbean situation, and that's right. But in the context of Black Britain, which has had a very different historical experience, and I've alluded to that in my new book. So for me, history, culture, and education, for people who are disconnected, people who are dislocated, from notions of self, history, education, and culture plays a part in repair, healing, and personal agency. So education is not just about getting a job. It's not just about um, doing what your parents say. It actually enables you emotionally and psychologically to improve a sense of well-being. Next. So you'll see here this guy here with the question marks above his head or her head, nondescript character, the black existential crisis. What is that? Well, when you look at it, if you look at it from a labeling perspective, when you tell a child they're stupid long enough, it takes about six weeks. If you keep telling a child long enough, they'll start to act that way. In prison, it's the same thing. So therefore, from a labeling point of view, when we internalize a label, and we take it on, we become that. It's, because, it's called deterministic. The relevance of it is, what if a whole generation of people have been told for the last 400 years all they were were slaves? What if they were told that you didn't contribute to the war? What would happen if those same people were told that you've never invented anything? So you realize that with film and television and social media, there is a different awakening happening now. Because generations, the next generation are saying, well, hold on, where did we come from? How did we get here? What have we done? But what happens is the lack of visibility within British society, whether it's through politics, culture, marketing, advertising, whatever it is, if you are a non-white person and you don't see yourself reflected in what society is doing, you can have an existential crisis where you question why you're here. And we know in criminology that when you have a black accident, when you have an existential crisis, crime actually becomes one of the basis of how you express your views because you get blocked opportunity in society and crime becomes a way to satisfy that. So what I want to say is, is a lot of our young people entering into education, whether you're working class and white, whether you're working class and black, whether you're a female, you enter into an educational system that already has excluded you in favor of privileging the victor of war, privileging the aristocracy. Very little is there about diversity historically that will enable people to not have an existential crisis, but be comfortable where they fit in. Next. There is such a thing called black self-concept. We all have a self-concept. I've put the black in front of it because it's Black History Month, and I want to make the distinction by giving you a definition of self-concept. Self-concept is how people see themselves and the world around them. And if you have a positive self-concept, it can enhance notions of your self-concept, or it can distort it. Historically, for the last 400 years, there's been a distorted lens in the way that we view non-white people. We saw this demonstrated with the, the, the Queen's passing, where millions of people around the world were cheering, and I get that. But there was also a lot of people from colonized countries that weren't, which meant that on the news, it was very evident that if you wasn't jumping up and down and shouting about what happened, there was some criticism. Yet you have to look at where the criticism came from. So once again, one of the key things about education, it should bolster your self-concept. So if you're gonna talk about the industrial revolution, you should be representing working class people and all the people that contributed, not just the rich industrialists. 
Likewise, when you're looking at history, you have to include the diverse range of people that made history. When you talk about the suffragettes, there were black suffragettes. When you talk about the Industrial Revolution, black people shaped that. When you talk about slavery, it wasn't just slaves that black people um, were involved in when it comes to the slave trade. There were advocates. There were many different types of people involved in the abolition of slavery. So again, education is strengthening notions of your self-concept. And for black people, it becomes fundamental because the attainment gap for black people in education at the primary, secondary, higher education, further in higher education is between 12 and 15 percent. And that's and, and the criminal justice system, mental health system and other areas pick up the deficit of people that fail in school. And a frightening statistic is 60 percent of those in the British prison system dropped out of school. So when we look at children in care, when we look at those who are less fortunate, those people, young people who are ill and all sorts of stuff. Those are the ones that fall foul. So black self-concept from an educational stand standpoint is very important. But as you know anything about the national curriculum, uh, it doesn't reflect diversity in the slightest. So therefore, a lot of what happens is reject a kind of rejection of the education system because people don't feel included.